Now that you have understood how to determine the cause of the problems, welcome to the quality improvement session on how to analyze and measure the quality of care. In this session, you will learn how we use two types of indicators, the process indicator and the outcome indicators to know your progress. Indicators are data that is used to not only communicate within the team and others, but also helps us to compare with ourselves over time and with others. We need to measure two different indicators in a QI project. How well did we do what we planned to do? This is called a process indicator. A process indicator measures what is done. For example, in our QI project to reduce infections in NICU, one of the main interventions we did was to improve hand hygiene compliance. If we do not measure this process, how will we know whether the action, in this case hand hygiene, is improving or not? The second indicator is called an outcome indicator. This measures our result. This indicator should be closely linked to our SMART aim. If our aim is to reduce infections, then measuring infections in NICU diligently is vital and this is our outcome indicator. These indicators also guide us to understand what interventions are needed to reach our aim. For example, if the hand hygiene compliance is very good and always more than 90%, but the infection rates in your unit are not reducing, then it means that you need to look into some other process in addition to hand hygiene. In one QI project, there may be more than one process indicator. While choosing indicators, we should be very clear, precise, and unambiguous so that everyone in the team understands it in the same way and knows how to measure it. The indicator is a ratio or rate of an event. It is important to define the numerator and denominator for each indicator. The indicator should be linked to the SMART aim statement and it will help us to test change and track improvement. The collection of data for the numerator and denominator should not be difficult and should be part of the team's daily routine. The team should be very clear from where the data will be collected and how often the team will review the data. Let us now look at how to develop good indicators. Our team started a QI project to reduce hypothermia at birth. What are the indicators that we can use in this study? The outcome indicator is clearly the percentage of babies hypothermic at 60 minutes after birth. The two interventions that we focused on to achieve this was drying the baby well immediately after birth and improving skin to skin contact at birth. These will serve as our process indicators. That is the percentage of babies dried immediately after birth and percentage of babies getting skin to skin contact at birth. Here, the denominator should be all the live bonds in the facility. It is very useful to denote the details of the indicators before we initiate the study. Define the numerator and denominator clearly. Clarify who will collect this information, how often, and from where the data will be collected. In this example, the nurses can record if skin-to-skin -skin contact is given or not, in the labor room register, which will serve as a source for both the numerator and the denominator. The indicator should be reviewed periodically. A graphical representation of the indicators in the form of a time series chart or a run chart is very useful. The time series chart should be labeled clearly. The X axis is usually the time in days, weeks, or months and the y-axis shows the percentage of the intervention or the process. Any new change introduced can be annotated on the time series chart. For example, in this time series chart, we did a simulation-based training for all healthcare providers at birth, and this resulted in improving skin-to-skin -skin contact between mother and baby. Please note that more frequent measurement, daily or weekly, is better than less frequent measurement. Review of data periodically is also crucial. Please do not collect data that are not vital for the study so that you do not overburden the nurses with data collection. 
If it is possible, use routinely collected data, such as from the birth register. In summary, outcome and process indicators help us to know, are we doing what we are supposed to be doing? And are we achieving the change that we desire? A time series chart is a good review of the indicators. Thank you.